Is God influencing you? Or are you influencing, trying to influence God and say, do this for me. Go there and get that. Heal that person. Send that person there. Get me my money. Get the business to me. Do this, Lord. Is it a time where you're giving orders to God? And thinking you're praying or is it a time when you surrender and submit to God where God is able to influence you by his spirit and by his word you know when you do not pray or you're negligent about prayer you know what that means it means you're full of pride what you're telling God is I don't need you I can do it by myself and only when you get into a place where you're not able to handle it in yourself and in your strength and with your intellect then you fall on your face and begin to cry and you think that's humility well there is a there is true it is a kind of humility but what God expects us is to come to him totally dependent on him the reason we see Jesus who is what the Son of God Jesus who is the logos is that right yes, yes. he prayed did he pray yes. and he prayed much because it is in the prayer in the place of prayer that you surrender to God Amen. you acknowledge who he is and you also acknowledge how insignificant and incapable you are without him is that true Come on, somebody talk to me. If that is true, then I, I am not going to God to pray only to ask for things. Bless my business. Give me good health. Get my daughter married. My son a visa. Well, all those desires will be fulfilled. But primarily, prayer has not been established only for that purpose. Prayer was established for our intimacy with God and growing in our relationship with Him where we grow in his strength and we permit God and make ourselves available that he can flow through us to establish his kingdom if that is true say amen, amen. now the Bible says that we were made for his pleasure amen. if that is true say amen again amen. so if I'm made for his pleasure why is it that my my time of prayer is always focused on my pleasure why is it that I come to church just because my pleasure is not hindered? I come to church that I might have good health, I might get blessed, I might increase. And God wants all that to happen to all of us, but that, is not the, that should never be the primary reason. We all have to come to the understanding that God has given us birth on this planet, and in His grace is extending our lifespan so He can fulfill His pleasure in us and through us. But you cannot discover his purpose and his plan and, 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 and let him use us if you're not surrendered to him. See, when, when, a, when, a, when a manufacturer is making something, he manufactures it for a purpose. Or he makes it for a purpose. There is a purpose for everything that is done. Amen? All right, so let's look at this aspect this morning that God is a maker. But before I do that, it might turn out that this will be the sermon today. I'm not sure. Let's go on. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 to 3. 1 to 3. Okay. Arise, shine. This was the word that God gave us, right? Arise, shine. Thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Go for it. Go again. And behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Wait a minute. What is he saying? Go back. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Mark those words. The glory of the Lord should be seen upon you and I. It is not enough just to confess the Lord has risen over me. Okay? But the glory should rise and glory should be seen. The Lord shall arise upon thee and the glory shall be seen. Is that, is that clear? Now go next verse. 
and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. I will deal with this at a later stage. I want to do a few, uh, a small series on this, but I want you to get this. For what God does in my life, people should be, should be able to see the evidence, number one. Number two, it says, because they see the evidence, Gentiles will be drawn. Come on, talk to me. That means people will recognize and will begin to honor you for that. What does the Bible say? In Genesis chapter 39, it says, the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. Amen? And then let, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Go ahead. Verse 3. And the master, read that word, next word. Saw. saw. Stop. There is something that the Gentile was seeing that rested upon this Jewish boy. What is it that people are seeing that is over your life? If we are just like anybody else, it does not attract the people to you. We are here to attract people to us so we can point them to Him. See, this is living for his pleasure. So if I live a life where it, which is not pleasing to him, then God's grace and his glory will not be upon my life and people will not be able to see that. When it says, and his master saw, what did he see? The Lord was with him. So when it says he saw that the Lord was with him, what did he see? Did he see a glory cloud on him? He was not spiritual. He was not a Jew. He was not close to God. He was a Gentile, an Egyptian. And this guy, Joseph, was a servant, a slave. But he saw something different about him. What did he see? What he saw were the results. Amen. What you produce through your life. What comes out of your mouth, what comes through your hands, what people recognize that this is beyond the ordinary. This is not just as a result of your training. This is not just a result of human intellect. There is an edge over all this. There's something about this man. I cannot put a finger and say, this is it. But I can see that the hand of God is upon this man. Because whatever he puts his hand unto shall prosper. prosper. That is a sign to the Gentile. Is that true? So my question to all of us is this. What are people seeing you as? Do they see God? Do they see just human nature? Do they just see you as ordinary? Because there has to be something extraordinary over our lives if the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. It is not enough just to confess the glory of the Lord is upon me. It has to become a reality where somebody is able to see that. So it says, when they see that, what happens? The Gentiles are attracted. For what? They may see that whatever you're doing, it's prospering. So they come and say, can you please advise me on this? He's not a church member, though. He's, an, he's a Gentile. You know, I saw that when you prayed or you did whatever you guys do, things happen. Can you do that for my family? They're asking these questions. They need to know. They need to see that. So it says, Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings. Who are kings? Leaders of, in industries. People who influence the masses. Talk to me. People who do things that affect the lives of people. And and mass, okay? These are influence, these are kings. It says, King 
things shall come to the rising of the brightness of thy rising. So when the glory of the Lord shall come, the glory is not only supposed to sit on you, the glory is supposed to raise you. Come on. Raise you to a place of prominence where it's not the, just the ordinary folk that you work among that recognize it, but people that are above you say, hey, I see something about you. And they're attracted. They come and sit with you and say, we need to hear from you. They're attracted. There is something that happens in the realm of the spirit that causes them to be drawn to you. Kings shall do what? Kings, to, they shall come to the brightness. They shall come. You're not going begging. They're coming looking. Amen. See, I want you to know that prayer is what helps us to surrender ourselves to God. That God can make us into those people. The Gentiles... attracted and the kings come to the brightness of thy rising people of God if all you do in your prayer time is only ask for things you have not truly understood the 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 the, 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 the value of prayer prayer is where you're growing in your intimacy with God hallelujah and you know what happens People say that when you spend time with a person for a long time, you begin to think like them and you begin to talk like them. Is that true? Influence. So prayer is a time of influence where you are submitting yourself that God can influence your thinking and your speaking and your actions. Come on, is God influencing you? Or are you influencing, trying to influence God and say, do this for me, go there and get that. Heal that person, send that person there, get me my money, get the business to me, do this Lord. Is it a time where you're giving orders to God and thinking you're praying? Or is it a time when you surrender and submit to God where God is able to influence <laughs> and by his word there has to be transformation 
There has to be renewal of the mind. You have to begin to think differently. As you spend more time in the presence of God, as you pray in the Holy Ghost, something is happening which your natural mind may not be able to comprehend, but people cannot deny that something has happened.